Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome back to Bucked Up Customs. I'm your host, the Rental Man Buck. You guys can remember that old first gen Dodge is that in the back. We finally got that project finished up. And the other truck that we also got done last time is the old 6.2 liter GMC. Interior has been completely redone. We're just waiting on the owner to come pick that thing up. The Dodge, however, we are going to try and sell. I'm going to head over to my co-part, though, and check out if they have any projects that we might be able to go and work on. I invested in this truck about a month ago. We needed a new hauling truck, that old Chevy. Just it. We wanted something that could still tow really well, but just be a bit more comfortable. So we ended up going with a 2017 extended cab, eight foot box power stroke. And if you guys know Diesel Division Customs, otherwise known as Anselmo, he gave me a triaxle Lamar tilt deck trailer this thing is awesome looking and it looks great when paired to this power stroke and i'm really excited to use it because i think that winch on there is actually from the platinum dlc where we might be able to hook it up to something so let's get on the road and head to our local co-part if you guys do like content like this and would love to see more be sure to smash that like button and possibly subscribe down below we are on the race to beat the goal of 100,000 public subscribers by the end of this year Bucked Up Customs takes place on Alma, Missouri, which is one map I have really yet to play. It always seemed kind of small, in my opinion. I know it's a 1X, but the town portion always seemed like it had more to offer. The real question is, which building do we go into? I think it might be this. Might, that just looks like it. That's just a shop. Okay. $5 entry fee. That I can do. Sign the waiver. Okay. Right out the gate, we have a... Three, looks like a 350 small block strapped to a pallet laying on the back of a very beat up Camaro. Got the old Dodge four door sedan, but it does have a 440 big block in it. That is huge. Older Ford. Wear body alert. It's missing a wheel though. I wonder where that's at. You've seen better days. Second gen missing its engine. Is there anywhere where it tells me where this what engine might have been in this? Belt pattern. 5.9, but I can't tell if it's a 12 valve or a 24 valve. And it is sitting on rims. Some of these cars really aren't worth anything. I mean, the IROC might be worth some money, but... Now that's a wagon wagon. I always wanted to restore or have one of these big things. Just an absolute boat. I mean, it's it's a full-blown Suburban, but like slammed to the ground. It's like an old Caprice. Well, the interior on that one's actually not half bad. That's... I mean, it's, it's dusty, but it's not really that bad. Minivan. That Audi's seen better days. What are you? Must have been a mock-up Big Ten. I mean, the bed's in good condition, though. That's that's a plus. I'm actually curious. Does this other square body... How's the bed look on this one? The cab's not in too bad a shape, but the bed... Yeah, the bed's long gone. How's the inside? Of, oh, yeah, that's that's gone. Would someone like to explain to me why there's 60 Ford parts in the back of a Dodge that's on rims? That's confusing me. If you could just find a wheel for this hub, you might be able to just roll it out and then we could load it up on the trailer. That's actually a pretty savable one. And we'd have to get a bed, so we might have to salvage the one that's off the Big Ten. But I think that'd actually be a really good project. This, on the other hand, because it doesn't have a motor, I'd be interested to see what they'd want for that. It could actually become a really nice truck. Let's head back inside and go kind of see, because I don't really see anything else that I would want. There is this Peterbilt back here with a Caterpillar in it, but that's rusted away. I don't... I don't think I want to mess with that. I honestly think I'm going to buy that K30 and the 3500 Ram, and then I'll just see how much they charge me for that big 10 bed on the back of the C10. What do you guys have the second gen Ram listed for, as well as the yellow C30? And then if I could get the bed off of the blue C10, that would be great. Ram's listed at 6500, and the Chevy's 82.5. That's 500. Okay. We're looking at $14,750, add in our sales tax, and we're looking at $15,782. Can I talk you guys down into doing that for fifteen? dollars We can do that? All right. So I'm going to run to the bank quick. I was going to try and do an online uh, withdrawal, but it, it's a little bit too much money. So I'll run to the bank quick, get myself that $15,000. And then hopefully by the time we're back, they'll have the wheel loader out. One thing that always sucked about the bank is how I can never park there. So I always, had, I always have to park at the pizzeria. Okay, let's make this quick. Luckily, that didn't take too long. We got our 15000 Let's head back and get that RAM purchased. You know, it actually wouldn't be a bad idea to give Corey a ring and see if he could start looking up some uh, rims for that RAM. I don't know entirely yet if they did find a wheel in the lot, but we're hoping for it. Hey, Corey. 
Yeah, buddy, if you want to start looking for a set of rims for a dually Dodge Ram 3500, that'd be fantastic. Just see if you can find any of the steel wheels uh, for any. It doesn't even matter if the tires are bad on them. We're going to replace it anyway, but we need something if we can go pick it up that's close. You'll do that? All right, thanks, bud. We'll be back at the lot in probably about 20 minutes or so. Yep, sounds good. Right now, you guys are looking live. I'm just kind of doing a voiceover of this part. You're looking live at the Volvo front loader. He's going to currently be trying to get that Ram picked up. I don't know exactly what route he's going to have to take, but I think he knows what he's doing. So we're going to leave him to do what he needs to do. The good thing he's got that safety beacon on. I don't think anybody would be able to see this massive monstrosity. He should have the majority of it. He's just got to kind of find a way to tilt back. He's on the frame. Hang on, bud. I'll go check and see if you're hung up on anything. I don't believe you are, but give me just give me just a second. All right, I think we're out of the way enough. I'm trying to tell him that he's still got to go up a bit, so that way he can that way he misses the K30 when he backs up. Up oh, there he goes. Okay, he's got it now. He's got it. It's got to be very delicate with these things, guys. Got to be very very delicate. We're gonna move the rims over and we'll set this thing back on top of the frame. Pop it over the exit. Almost there. Beautiful. Look at that. Now, without ripping it off, let's see if we can back this thing straight out. Let's see. Did we ever find that tire? Yes, we did. Okay, let's get this tire on. I know it. you guys won't be able to see the visual of it, but do keep in mind, guys, when you do tighten your lug nuts, you do want to make sure that it is in a star pattern. So I'll take care of that, and we'll come back and get this one later. Corey, what's the uptake on that? Do we find any wheels for this thing? We did. Where are they at? It's over at the cattle barn on the south side of the city limits. I can do that. Hey, I'll do I'll just see if we can take Daryl's truck. If that works with him. Daryl! Hey, do you mind if we take your truck to go get some wheels for this ram? Alright, thanks, bud. You can look at the truck, Missy May, but you can't touch it. Navigation set. I'm just gonna take Daryl's truck quick. We'll go pick up those wheels. And then we should be back to try and roll that ram off the trailer. And $1,200 later, we got ourselves a new set of rims and rubber. I'm not going to lie, the tread on the tires is pretty horrendous. There's not a lot of meat left on the bone. But speaking of not a lot of meat left on the bone, here's some Rhino 2 and I will be doing some eye racing together, also with Brody Farms, otherwise known as Happy Farms. I don't know exactly when we're going to do it yet, but I am working on... Some paint schemes for my channel sponsors, one of which is Moza Racing. So if you guys want to check out MozaRacing.com, I currently use the Truck Simulator steering wheel. This thing is an absolute brute. It's mounted to the R9 V2 direct drive wheel hub. Got a set of three pedals and a seven-speed manual gearbox. All links can be found down below. So if you guys really do like racing sims and you do want to get serious about your experience, be sure to check out MozaRacing.com. Other than that, let's get these rims on this piece of garbage ram and roll it into the shop. This should be the last of the bolts. We kind of got a little close on this. We did have to raise it up just a hair to get, I believe, this corner on since it sat a little bit lower on those rims. There we go. I think we'll just probably he-man this thing around the shop. We got to get all the stuff cleaned out of the back of the bed. We're going to wash it off. We're going to see what we're going to pull the hood off. We're going to see really all what we have to do to this truck. But I still have to go and get that Chevy. So I'm going to leave Daryl to figure in that out. Him and Corey can he-man this thing all they want. Kevin's not going to be touching that thing. Copart guys actually took care of getting the Chevy ready for us. I did have to do like a log setup because the Platinum winch, while it is a absolutely fantastic winch system, it only really works when you, you know, you hook it to a tree. I'll know right away when it hooks because you, you'll see the winch thing. There it goes. Give it a quick little snug. Might have to align it first. That might have been a good idea. That is what we want. Now I'll have the rope pull itself and I got to see if I can pull it a little bit slower. We get it, we're just pulling it up the trailer nice. I don't want to just yank this thing and all of a sudden it goes haywire. Slowly. The only thing I have left to grab is the truck bed that's sitting on the back of the of the Big Ten. I'll come back for that later. We're going to get these things back to the shop. Daryl should have at least the basic parts of the Ram taken apart. So let's head back to the shop and then we'll come get the bed later. All right, Daryl, how much of that Ram did we get taken apart? Got the headlights out, got the hood off. Bumper, rear bumper off and the tail lights are out and then you cleaned out all the 6-0 parts put them up in the loft all right let's go take a look 
And the Chevy is already also in the garage, so we'll have to kind of start working on that. That already looks about 15 times better. I mean, it's it's still rough. But it tell me you also cleaned out the interior. That'll work, though. I'm going to start working with Corey to start getting parts ordered. We're obviously going to be putting back in a 5.9. That's what was already in the truck. We'll just get ourselves a 12-valve Cummins. Mount it to a new 5-speed manual transmission. Because in my opinion, you can't have a second-gen Ram that has a diesel in it without it being a manual. Like, it just the automatic doesn't do it. But while Daryl's out on his break, we'll send him over to the wash bay and get these things washed off with some Andy Clean. But with the Chevy also now in the shop, I'm going to start working on getting these motors running and knowing what parts we need to fix. We did also go back and get the Big Ten bed. It had two bolts that were really fighting us. The issue with this bed is that it is a left side fuel tank and this truck is a right sided fuel tank. I don't know if we're going to be able to fix that. We might just have to see if we can't salvage this panel. With this mod, I can't do that. So visually think that the gas cap's going to be on this side. <laughs> Daryl's going to have quite the rust repair to do on the rockers for this 3500. I didn't realize how much it was rotted out underneath. I looked at it quick, but we'll just have to take off these steps. And it's going to be a process, guys. Let's get this stuff cleaned up first. And we'll catch you guys back when we probably have one of these trucks on the lift. So we can start ordering parts and getting stuff put in. Later. Just finishing up on the washing process underneath this ram. We could definitely tell this thing had some fluid leaks though up on the front. I can't tell if it's transmission fluid or if it was motor oil. It was sitting kind of back in an area where it could have been a leak in oil pan, but it also is sitting close enough to the transmission that we could have been leaking transmission fluid. Either way, this thing is starting to look a little bit more promising than I thought. We will have to fix our engine mounts on this thing as when it had its front impact collision, it did break one of those mounts. And I'm wondering if somebody saw that took the motor because the motor was still good, but the mounts just were shot. So they made their own and blah, 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 blah. I've been trying to look online at some wheels that would look good with this. We also had a windshield on order because the cracks are just atrocious in this thing. The Chevy, on the other hand, while looking into the motor, we found out that it is missing its water pump. We do need to also get ourselves a new carburetor rebuild kit. It looks like it's got an Edelbrock on it, but we might just put an EFI Holly and just call it good. So it's basically fuel injected. But other than that, everything at least component-wise seems to be there. I don't know the state of the transmission on this truck because we can't start it. But we're going to send Daryl off to Metal Fab and get all of the sanding work done for this truck. I'm going to work on the Dodge, get ourselves some headlights in, get a new hood ordered, get a new dash order, get the windshield ordered. And I think, like I said, we're just going to build out a basic old farm truck. The Chevy, on the other hand, we're probably going to throw some bigger tires, a lift a kit on it. That one will be the more fancy of the two. This truck's got some body work. This truck's got body work. Let's knock it out. And we'll see you guys back here in a couple days. Welcome back, everybody. I'm just finishing up some stuff on the computer. Uh, Corey is sick today, so I've been doing a lot of the office work, but checking back in with the shop. Kevin's been working overtime on getting the RAM set up. We've done all of our body work already ahead of time. Turn on the flashlight so we can see a little bit better. We've removed all of the trim just so we can keep this truck looking clean for right now. We have the back bumper off. It does say that it is a roll pan, but we pretty much just took that out. We also did end up taking out all of the bed accessories. Our fuel door was still going to have to be on the right side of the truck. I couldn't really fix that. We successfully got all of our lifter parts removed and the motor is cleaned up. This thing is an absolute animal. Take a listen to this bad boy. Dual exit exhaust. This thing is just awesome. All right. This thing is just awesome. I, however, did not do any work to our rims because we are going to be putting on a different set. So why on earth work on that if we're just going to be putting on some different and newer and better rims? Moving over to the Dodge, though, we do have the new bumper. We have the new hood. We have the new headlights. We said this was going to be the stock truck. That's going to be the fancy truck. So a lot of the parts haven't been ordered for the Chevy yet. Or if they have, I just haven't seen the worksheets for those yet. Once this 12 valve is put in, though, we will be heading over to AutoZone and picking ourselves up, you know, some motor oil, some fluids. We'll obviously have to still change the fluids in the 454 because we haven't done that yet. And that is a Butte Clark. Look at that 12 valve sitting in there. Beautiful motor. Next up on the list is to route in our cooling system with the radiator as well as our intercooler for the turbo system we're going to be putting on this. 
I'm not gonna lie guys, it is a big radiator. Like that is a huge radiator. And then our intercooler is gonna be sitting on the front side of this, but we'll mount that up a little bit later. With all of our plumbing done, this motor seems to be in adequate shape to start mounting on the rest of the body parts. I still have to run to AutoZone before they close. This is what our bumper is going to look like once we can get it put on. Now there is a chicken light system that I can get where it puts a air dam on the bottom and it puts a whole line of chicken lights. Being this is going to be a farm truck, I really do kind of want to test that out. Set that back down on the ground. Let's run to AutoZone quick and get ourselves some fluids for both the 5.9 and the 454. What on earth is that? Hold on a minute. There is no way. That is a truck bed camper. An old truck bed camper. How much do they want for it? $500. You gotta be kidding me. We are definitely giving that thing a ring. Do you know how cool that thing would look on the back of the Chevy? Like, that is awesome looking. I'll give them a ring when I'm on my way back. We gotta, we gotta get the oil parts and we gotta get the stuff from... I think there's a Circle C that's out here as well. A few moments later with some fresh peak green coolant because you know old cast iron blocks take green coolant not orange let's go and grab that coffee i'm hoping i can fit through the drive through of this thing i just need a standard large coffee if i could please and also add in a breakfast burrito all right thank you that was fun i like drive throughs well that should finish up our oil change on the k30 We've already filled up our coolant. We have made sure we have checked for leaks. We've double checked. Get this bad boy lowered down. The, the Dodge has actually also been put back together. I know we kind of keep jumping, but there's really, it's kind of hard to catch a lot of the content for this one, really due to the fact that these guys are just working that fast in the shop. This truck now can run and drive on its own. We're still kind of figuring out the brake system. I think we need to do master cylinder. That and I believe some of our brake lines are like, you know, could have seen better days. But this truck has the ability to... We got all... We got engine temps. We have our coolant. If you look over at the dash, we do have our voltmeter. Our gas gauge is reading that we are very low on fuel. That is because we just still did not, you know, fill up the tank on this thing yet. So let's shut that off. And I'm excited to tell you guys that Daryl's going to be painting this truck. So we'll send this thing off to paint. And we'll continue working mechanically on getting this Chevy done. I like it. I love it. I want some more of it. I tried so hard to look at this absolute brute. Got some American racing rims with some BF Goodrich mud terrain tires. It might be a little bit big for my taste, but you know what? It'll work. And the Ram, while it seems very basic, I know, is going to be painted white. We still have to add all the options. Don't worry, it's not going to stay super basic. But both trucks are coming along absolutely fantastic. I'm really liking the way these things are turning out. With the Ram moving over to get accessories applied, we are going to also start taking the Chevy to paint. We'll put on our new chrome bumpers and grill. Also put on the accessories to this truck after we get done with the Ram. So we'll check back in when this truck's painted and that truck's got its additions on. We should have two fantastic looking trucks. This has been a very expensive project. It's been a very inclusive project. We've had a lot to do, but I'm excited. So let's get this thing out into the paint booth. Let's also fire up the 12 valve because you guys haven't heard this thing yet. We finally got it running and it runs and drives on its own and it sounds beautiful. Oh yeah. She's belching black smoke because we haven't dialed in the ECU yet for the fuel mix ratio. So this thing is not having it. We're still gonna service this thing up, get it really fine tuned and it'll be a powerhouse. As for the Chevy though, I can tell this truck is definitely riding a lot higher and you, you can obviously, you know, see the, see the wheels in the mirror with both trucks now in their set positions. We'll check back in with you guys once these things are at their next phase. And with the paint job done and a new grill put in, this thing is looking better and better by the day. We finally put all the trim back on. We also installed our mud flaps, which are kind of having a little bit of rubbish problems, but nothing too crazy. We did remove the tailgate in the back. There is a reason for that. Our Dodge is done. 
This just needs its accessories, and then we are completely done with the entire project as a whole. That surprise is the camper. I went and bought that camper. We got it for $490, and Daryl and Corey are just redoing the entire inside of it outside right now. It, this has been about two months in the works, guys. I know it hasn't says we haven't changed the days, but it has been a hassle to get all this stuff done. So let's get this thing moved over and get our accessories put in, and then we are set to go. Look at that. Holy cow. I, I literally don't think I've ever seen anything more beautiful in my life. Get out of the way, Dodge. Well, there is part one. We have our 1983 Chevrolet K30, which this thing is absolutely awesome. Like, it couldn't have turned out any better. And there is a door to the back, so we can actually go in, which Anselmo did a spectacular job on this thing. It's not the most detailed, but you know, it gets the point across and it looks awesome. But we have bigger priorities to get through, and that is what does that Dodge look like? You can't get much better than that. A simple classic rebuild from scrap. Now, both of these vehicles do need fuel, but I really want to just hammer down on this Cummins because this 12 valve, it is something special. I wish I could go on the interior camera, but it's kind of broken. That doesn't bother me, though. All I know is I just want to hear this baby roar down the highway. Let's make our way to the gas station and pick up some diesel. Well, guys and gals, I think that is going to do it for me this time on the Bucked Up Customs. If you guys did enjoy this video, please be sure to smash that like button, subscribe down below. I'm going to head my way back to the dealer. Might even stop by my buddies at the Copart place and just show them what this thing ended up turning out to be. But we'll see you guys all in the next one. This is the Rental Man Out. Peace.